Because there are no pain receptors in the brain, it is possible to carry out surgery under local anesthetic. The fact that the patient remains conscious throughout means that the surgeon can stimulate areas to map their function. What we're going to do now is we're going to get you counting and talking when I touch your brain with an electrode so we can just work out where the speech area is. Okay? One, two, three, four. Okay. Go on counting. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's great. <laughs> this is proof that thought is a physical phenomenon. It's not paralyzing the vocal cords, but it's actually paralyzing the mental processes that turn a thought into a word. You actually see somebody talking on one side of the screen, and on the other side you see this blob of brain which is doing it. It is a very, it's a very profound, thought-provoking experience. Charting how certain areas of the brain control specific functions has proved particularly useful when mapping our language and creative skills. The sites involved in language are very focal, very localized ones, about the size of the end of my thumbnail. But if you look across the population and you say, now, how, how are these distributed? There's a lot of variants. They're in somewhat different locations in most people. This is a barn. Piano. Because different areas of the brain have to work together, if these partnerships fail, it can inhibit certain abilities or release others. One has to think of the brain as a number of interactive modules and that some perhaps inhibit and or suppress the function of other modules. And so if you knocked out a module that was that's main role was inhibitory, then you could have a gain of function of other parts of the brain. This is borne out by the achievements of those suffering from certain neurological conditions. Vincent van Gogh suffered from a particular kind of epilepsy. It was a type of seizure that had more to do with his ideas and rush of ideas and his behavior than had to do with the traditional aspect of epilepsy where patients fall to the ground, jerk all over and foam at the mouth and lose consciousness. Dr. Koshbin believes that in van Gogh's case, his epilepsy affected the area of the brain just behind the temples, known as the temporal lobe. The sensory integration takes place there, vision and hearing, because it comes in there and gets processed there. So it's easy to see how a disturbance in this area could create a different sensory experience.